Welcome back everyone. We got Gary in there getting that quarter all cleaned up and ready to put in. Um, that's gonna be the start of this new episode here. And uh, let's dive into that work. All right, y'all, so I just went and dropped some things off. Got a phone call from Pops that we have some more bad news. So I wanted to share it with y'all firsthand. Oh, nice. Y'all see what we see? That's all mud and that's all rust. Mud, rust. No good. So it needs that window channel. Need that window out. Yep. Well, I was gonna start cutting on that so I could start fitting it when I was cleaning all this up. So, with that being said, if it's in that corner, it's in that it's corner. It's in that corner. You best believe it. Because so of how they did it. Yeah, they just, they yeah. had the glass out at one time. Absolutely. Which they I probably took it out from the factory and it would have been come out real easy if you would have piano wired it. Yep. But as you can tell, as they glued it back in, I mean, they didn't even use real butyl or anything. No, it's all fake. So, yeah, this is all probably Bondo. Bondo right here. Well, that's why I ground on that. Yeah. I to see if I could, which we do have a pinhole. It's started to rest right in here. Yep. So. Oh, yeah, because that mud goes here. So that means it yep. probably goes along. Yep. Who knows how far. So the only true way to do this is to get that back glass out. Yep. It doesn't appear to be cracked, so. Nobody will. Nope, because of the way it was your thing, yeah. Yep. Like, literally, the last guy was told me my best bet was to smash them out and clean up my mess. Y'all hear that? I was told to smash them out, and we are trying to save them, but now I don't think we're going to be able to save them due to this. Like Gary was saying, if it's in this corner, it's definitely over there, and the glass has got to come out, but also, like he said, due to how they have it in, I mean, you guys can see it, it's just... It's just a mess, so the chances of us getting out without cracking it are slim to none. And as we've talked, this front one's got a crack in it here already, so no one will mess with the front windshield. So we have to get a front glass no matter what, and we were trying to save from getting a back glass. But it uh, looks like we'll be putting basically all new glass in this car as well. Um, we got to redo the interior due to it, and now we'll put glass in it due to it. So. Uh, the risk we take, I guess, getting into it. I mean, uh, you never know what you're gonna get into with other people's work and where it's gonna lead to. So, um, with that, we'll keep trucking and get the glass out. Would say was a success look at all this that's a mess all this goop just hanging all the rust in here this is all mud just a flipping absolute mess look at that this can break it all out that's just not good so rear glass is out I got it out. I don't believe there's any cracks in it. I'll check it once I get it clean. But now, let's try to beat this front windshield and not spread that crack any. This thing was just gooped in there. Just a mess, I tell you. Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, look at this. Just, just a mess. So, there's rust all over down in here. As y'all can see. Hey, look, one of the GTO badges. Nice. Never would have found that. Anyways, there's rust all over in this thing. The poor dash is all cracked. <sighs> Car needs a lot of love, but we got this quarter out. We're waiting for this tub. Whew. Anyways, um, now that I got all the glass out, we're gonna keep on trucking on either the quarter or the doors or 
just keep on going, so let's dive back into it. What y'all know about this one? Hide a patch. Just hide it up, right? So, this patch here was the only thing pops. I heard him chiseling over here, and so sure enough, it was uh, just a little piece of tin over it. Yeah. So, that's what you pay for when you take it to a reputable shop in our local area, I guess. Uh, that's what they had done. Look, it started rusting through this one. And it was just laid over the piece, so that's pretty sad. Uh, yeah. I guess we're gonna get that one cut out and uh, done up the right way there. Man. This poor car. <laughs> yeah. Golly. There is a lot of metal work that needs to be done. Yeah, you all see that? Look at those holes that they have made. Just ruined this. It has got a big old creaser through it right there too. Hmm. The joys of taking on simple projects in the shop. That's what they turn into. Simplicity at its best. Cool. Let's get back to it, I guess, huh? Welcome back to the GTO episode. We've been off it for a minute. A lot has changed since the last time y'all seen it, but look at the progress the old man's making. This quarter is about in. He's got it welded up, got it welded there, got it squeezed together. I've got all the parts over in my booth, getting them ready to take care of the rust treatment on them. We're gonna do a rust repair before we prime them. Uh, this one's going to go a little bit different than the Supra. On the Supra, as you guys seen, we skim coated the whole vehicle, blocked it, primed it, went through it. That car was in really bad shape. Don't get me wrong, this GTO is rough, but the panels are in much better shape than the overall Supra was. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to do our repairs, get it fixed, and then we're just going to prime this whole car. Set all this in primer set that side in primer. We'll have no repairs on that quarter panel, um, but we'll still set it in primer. And then, as I was saying, over here in the booth, I have got all the nose piece. Look at the curvature that's back in this. It's beautiful. Um, when we first got this, I mean, literally the Bondo was so thick that you couldn't even tell there was a curve here. It was almost flat all the way across. It was crazy. But this nose is finally, or this hood's finally got all of its curves back. You can see the peak in the nose. I mean, everything's just beautiful, beautiful the way it should be. We've got our patch panel put in down here. That one is fixed. We have repaired all the front of these. Gary's just been going crazy on this thing. I haven't even been able to keep up with him. So, you know, fixed up this whole nose cone there, put a patch panel in down here. I mean, he has plumb worked this stuff. So with that being said, we're gonna dive into some rust treatment. This will be actually one of my first times actually having to do it this way. Um, we've got this stuff called rust dissolver. And what we'll do here is we'll just put it on a rag and kind of wipe it all on and then wipe it off. It's like a wax on wax off process. Um, so with no further ado, let's dive into fixing this thing up. All right, y'all just got those all wiped down. I might actually wipe them one more time just to be safe. Make sure I got everything off of them. Then I'll make up some primer, lay it on these things nice and heavy. Then we'll be able to see exactly where we're at. Feeling them, they're really smooth. There's a little imperfections on them throughout here and there, and little spots and things of that nature. Um, but those will all get addressed. Like I said, we're just trying to set this thing in primer to see how much mud we're really gonna have to put on it. These are all original panels that seem to be pretty good. I mean, look at this hood. Those lines are all beautiful. I've already gone over the hood. The hood, man, the hood and the nose piece on this car are just incredible. And then how about these fenders? It looks like they just end, you know, but they go all the way under, especially these front noses. They go way underneath the car. So you'd think it'd stop here, but we've got all that. So there are just beautiful, you can see it from this side here. There's just so much fender. 
gorgeous, gorgeous car. So I'm gonna get some primer made up and let's get this thing sent in primer. That's gonna be awesome. And then all we got left is uh, the chassis. So we're getting real close, real, real close. Let's go take a look at that thing. I think Gary got the quarter all welded in actually. Yeah, this is all welded in. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful seam. All welded down throughout using our fire blanket. Real tight gap. Man, that is looking really nice. Look at all that. All welded in through here. No more, no more screws holding this thing in. Man, it's all done right. All through the wheel tub. We got it all, it's all welded there. It's all welded down into the rocker. Man, coming a long, long way. So, all through the floor, that's all just shavings. Look at that. Plug welded it, beautiful, beautiful. All the way up. So, we're butted up real nice right here. That'll come forward. That'll all match up right there. This is all good. The door striker. Good job to Gary there on that one. Um, he definitely knows what he's doing. So, he's going to keep plucking away on this. I'm going to get those parts set. And then we'll see where we're at on this thing. we still got to get this do both doors off. He started up some re more repair on this side here. So, get this all fixed up. This thing's coming along good. Coming along real good. We should have it in paint in no time. Look at all this leftover mud from the last people. Crazy. So... Anyways, let's go throw some front on it. All right, y'all. So that's all I'm gonna shoot. We got that laid real nice. We got a good coat on the fenders. What's going on everyone? Long time coming, but we are back on the GTO. We've got this quarter panel repaired. The old man's been going to town. This quarter panel's on and repaired. The car's all jammed. We're getting ready to throw some primer on this whole old girl. Um, just to kind of see where we're at. We still got a little bit of rust to fix up on it, but we're gonna go ahead and get the car all set in primer and then we can be working on at least getting this thing blocked while fixing up some rust on it. So we've already done the doors, um, one of the doors, both fenders, the trunk and the hood. So we really just got the car and these couple pieces left and then we will uh, be on to blocking it. And today while I'm at it, I'm going to do a little repair. Gary already knocked it out. So we're gonna slap some primer on this one and then uh, we'll block that out and hopefully get some paint on it here real soon. It's just a quick and easy, but enough jabbing, let's get to primer. So that's 20 minutes worth. I just got basically the whole car covered one time. Now I need to go make up some more primer and go over this thing one more time here. We've still got just a little bit where we had to do our primer work or our mud work, excuse me. So I'm gonna hit all these one more time with primer and we'll catch you all in the blocking stage. All right, y'all, so we got all the GTO parts in here for their second prime. Gary has blocked this thing out. But anyways, 
We got all the GTO parts in here. I'm getting ready to prime them and check this out. We're trying a new primer. Yes, it is pink. So it sprays on pink, sands uh, great. So it'll let us know our low spots without having to put any guide coat. But anyways, let's jump into priming this stuff for our second time here. Check it out. All pink. Like I said, this is a new primer we're using. It's made by Evercoat, the same company as all the other primers that we use. But this one was, I believe, just released this year for SEMA. Um, like I said, it goes on pink, sands gray. So it'll tell you all your low spots really easy versus having to put a guide coat on and gumming up your paper. So hopefully this is the ticket here. It costs about the same as all the other primers. I'm not too worried about it. I just shot like half a gallon on all these parts, three heavy coats. I'm real happy with the way they look. Let's uh, get on to blocking these things. Here, got it all wiped down. Um, I used some, another one of Evercoat's products for filling micro pinholes. Um, it works really good, it's called Express 440. It's like a dark black gray um, paste. And when you put it on, it just fills all the little micro pinholes. You can see how it's kind of dark there. It just kind of fills all those in. Makes it easier for the primer so it doesn't really have to absorb into the um, bondo or mud that's underneath. Um, but yeah, this car was just primed, so it was bare metal, primer, and then fixed all the spots, and now we're gonna do our second coat of primer and see where we're at on it. So if you look at it, there's not, you can see bare metal kind of everywhere on it. And uh, that's just because this was bare metal. We didn't skim coat the whole car. It was too straight for that. So if you guys watched the Supra build, we actually had to skim coat that whole entire car. We put Bondo on the whole thing, blocked it all out, and that's just because that body was so beat. Um, it had been repaired several times, yada yada. So this one was in really good shape. Um, so I should just be able to get away with priming it. And then with the second coat, it'll really let us know how straight the car is. I mean, it came out really straight. We just had a few little spots to fix. Um, but the second coat will let us know where we're at. So let's dive into it. All right, so I got the whole car primed. That's two coats of primer on it. We'll let this set up and then we will get to blocking. So we'll catch y'all on the blocking stage. All right, all right. Y'all see this thing? Man, it is looking good. So we went through, found every little spot. I really, I can't say it was phenomenal, but I liked that pink primer. Um, it definitely probably wasn't the right primer for this job, um, but I definitely think it's, it's the right idea. It works super nice for showing us highs and lows. Um, but it's more of a collision primer. I would say with my personal use of it, um, I'll be using it a lot on collision work. Um, if you look here, I got just regular primer made up again um, to go this round. So we like our high build primer. It works really good for this restoration stuff. Like I said, that pink stuff was really nice. Um, it sanded good, um, but it was a little hard. You definitely have to do it in the, in the series. Uh, you start with like a 180, go to a 220, finish with a 320, and it would be super cool. But if you try to just do a 320, all you're gonna be doing is wasting paper. Anyways, we got this back in the booth, and we are going on our final prime. So all these little tape marks here is where we have fixed something. Um, as you can see, we've got this brown putty and um, that's a quick spot putty is what that's for and that's just we're not trying to build with that stuff if you use regular bondo um, body filler over the top of what you've already got straight you're on the risk of creating uh, like a dome it'll go like this and even after you block it out flat you'll still have a little bit of a dome if you've built anything we're just trying to get that low equal so what we did was use the spot filler and got all our spots so that's where the pink primer kind of showed everything so that's where we're gonna spot prime so enough of me talking let's get into spot priming this thing
check out how straight this old girl is. We've been working really hard on getting this thing uh, ready for the customers for the holidays here. Um, we got just little touch-ups. You can see we got some guide coat. There's a few things I wasn't happy with there. A few things I wasn't happy with there. So we're going to touch those up tomorrow before we shoot this. All right, y'all. This thing's paint coat is 65. It's an antique gold. So uh, let's go ahead and make it. I'm going to make three quarters of a gallon unreduced. And then I'll reduce it out as I need it. So let's get to pouring this. All right, y'all. So I just got the color. I had to, instead of the medium, I had to use a little coarse. Um, but I got it wrote down here. I'll make a tag, put it on there. No big deal. But that is our color. Let's see. Actually, I think I'm just gonna shake it. I don't wanna waste any color on my stick because I'm a strickler like that. So we will do that. Maybe one day I'll upgrade and get a paint shaker, but until then, manual hand shaker. I'll catch y'all when this thing's shaked, show y'all the color. All right, so I got my gold. I don't know what to think of it. It's definitely gold. I don't know. I've never been a fan of gold. I've never had an eye for gold. I don't know what I'm looking for when it comes to gold, other than it's gold and it looks like a cardboard box. Um, but other than that, I really don't know what to say about gold. It's just one of those funky colors. Um, it's kind of like pink. There's so many shades of pink. There's so many shades of gold. Blues, greens, reds. You can play with those and make them a pretty color. Gold? Eh, it's gold. So anyways, colors made. Um, I've got a gallon of it made there, um, or close to a gallon of it made. I am going to... Go ahead and get that stuff ready for sealer and we will catch y'all in the booth. <laughs> 